Industry Manager, Product and Distribution Vodacom, who will be talking about evolution of the digital consumer. Wow, that's an interesting topic. Dervesh, welcome. The virtual stage is all yours. You're on mute, I think. Hi, can you hear me now? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mohammed Tofik, and a pleasure to be at such uh, a diverse forum. So Albert Einstein once says, if you don't explain something simply enough, you don't understand it well enough. And I think the previous two speakers have done an amazing job unpacking uh, the industry at various levels. Uh, I think Mr. Razwan at a very core technical level and um, our CEO from Vodafone Ghana, a holistic landscape uh, being provided. So I'm fortunate enough to be given the baton to discuss uh, the, the, the customer. What does all of this mean? I mean, we're not really walking around speaking to customers about Spectrum and all of that. Sorry? I said, please do represent you and I very well here. You were the expert. <laughs> I will try my best. Thank um, I mean, uh, the language we, we engage with uh, to our customers has come a long way. And I think we've done a great job as a telecoms business, translating a core technical capability into uh, the business narrative that has landed in creating strong brands in the heart of the customers. So if you look at the industry, 5G, blockchain, IoT, AI, big data, robotics, cloud, uh, the list can go on. I think um, when it comes to the customers, senior leadership teams within our organizations are exposed to a plethora of new technology, uh, each with varying architectures and designs and uh, a lot of subject matter experts in this regard. I think our role as business leaders uh, to the face of the consumer is to actually understand how we in leverage all of this technology and drive the evolution of, of the customer. And the importance of this ultimately leads to us generating return on investment for technology that we uh, roll out, uh, etc. So who or what is actually evolving and how does it fit together? Uh, is the evolution customer or technology led? And just like two sides of the pencil, these, these two uh, areas need to kind of grow together and uh, coexist. And yes, you'd be correct in that it's actually both. Both our customers are evolving as well as our technology. However, I do believe the evolution is customer in four. Um, no customers are, are, are demonstrating frustration uh, in the current 4G landscape to Razvan's point around how far the leap has, has come from, from 1G to 4G, where we are now. From a customer perspective, what was important in the past uh, 10 years was mainly about experience um, and individual experience, convenience, as well as the internet being a library of things. And this still remains. However, we are evolving, and this can be seen from the new organizations that are coming uh, to to pass uh, into a more live environment, um, both from a interaction uh, perspective as well as um, the platforms in which our customers are engaging. If you look at Taobao in China, like I mentioned, the metaverse, um, a lot of uh, a lot of speak around metaverse technology. Uh, this kind of gives you an idea of, of, of where customers are wanting to go uh, when it comes to the next gen of experiences. And yes, 5G has complications in terms of the future, like mentioned by previous speakers. However, um, I like to coin uh, an analogy of, of looking at this entire industry as an onion. And at the outer layer, you have the macroeconomic uh, landscape which is uh, basically um, each and every um, country facing its own macroeconomic issues. This will span unemployment, inflation, um, energy crisis, particularly, um, uh, and, and, and the like. And the next layer to that is obviously the regulatory landscape, which, which has been touched on by many of the speakers as well. The next layer to that is the, the, the connectivity landscape. 
for the layer after that is your hardware and software um, landscape. And as you get to the core, you now have what is your business to business and business to consumer landscape. And within each of these layers, there are plain, a plethora of discussion to be had. Um, so for example, if you look at the regulatory landscape, a lot of speak around um, relationships with governments, uh, at the technology landscape, capex cost for the rollout of 5G, and there, I mean, the the discussion at each of these layers are bottomless. But let me rather zoom in to where my focus is, and that is that of the B2B and B2C landscape, uh, because that is actually where the narratives of all of these uh, other layers translate. And I, my view is that for us to win in the markets. Um, we really need to have two goals. And I think the first, first goal is that to be a partner in life uh, to our customers. The second is to provide them a product they cannot refuse. And how do you unpack, how do you unpack that tangibly? And my view is that in order to do this, we need to provide an ecosystem of products and services that are diversified as well as have that enabled through a branded economy, uh, as mentioned in my, in my panel discussion as well. And what does this mean? Um, on one hand, we've got the current translation of revenue within a telco being that of data, airtime, uh, mobile devices. However, with 5G now potentially rolling out in the future, and, and we need to prepare for those discussions, how do, how do we as a telco position ourselves for the, the IoT industrialization um, that, that will take place? The new innovative technologies that uh, become born from this, such as the metaverse um, that will, will, will potentially live. And I'll just use a few use case examples. There's obviously plenty of these. And we need to now really discuss from a business perspective, where do we position ourselves? Um, fiber rollout we champion um, uh, at a consumer level. Um, and that was really our translation of connectivity into an alternative revenue stream. Um, the next segment is gaming. So what is going to be our role in terms of commercializing the gaming landscape, given the um, technology innovation that we're going to experience uh, in, the, in the short term? So these are the types of questions we need to answer from a business product offering perspective. The next question we need to answer is, how do we deliver that to the consumer? And if I look at a question I posed in the panel to say, do we, do we believe that we've reached um, digital evolution in its current form? And there are answers to this that, Many will say, no, we are far from it and that. But a counter debate to this is, well, we exist on, we exist, uh, on the internet. We exist in the form of mobile applications. We exist in the form of USSD. Uh, customers can interact with our products on all of these various channels. So where are we getting digital evolution as a concept to our consumers wrong? And that is the question we need to answer. And the answer to this actually lies in the connected ecosystems that we need to look to create. By doing so, customers are exposed to a variety of different products uh, and services across their need spectrum, touching different segments. And in doing so, it becomes a lot of, of information for these customers. However, this is where your data and data science and, and customer experience now plays a role in. Uh, directing your CVM teams away from sending bulk SMSs to customers and really getting into intelligence, such as next best product recommendation engines that live on whatever channels we choose to um, attach to certain segments, a branded economy that drives behavior and incentivization, whilst com whilst having products that 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 are differentiated in the market, and the combination of do, do these two things are what I believe are going to really exponentially drive our organization. If you look at South Africa, uh, particularly, like I mentioned, each, 
country will have its own onion and problems to unpack. So it's, it's, it's uh, Ashir Razvan's point around Africa being a big market to talk about in a singular word. But if you look at companies who've kind of done this um, in South Africa particularly, their share price has, gro has grown over a thousand percent in the last 10 years. And that's enough of a use case to kind of get you to understand what is actually driving uh, sustainable business amongst our consumers. Uh, especially with the high amount of intermediation that is taking place now within our telco business. Banks becoming MVNOs and, and selling devices, selling airtime, uh, retailers uh, doing the same. Um, there's, this puts a lot of pressure on the margins, even though we may be at the back end wholesaling these products um, at that level. Uh, it, sustainably, from a revenue perspective, the, the secret sauce for me is the, the smart diversification of products, as well as a combination together with that of a branded economy um, that we can now utilize. And how does this branded economy look uh, tangibly? For example, um, you have a variety of channels from which products uh, exist. You have your you can purchase the cell phone via the internet. Um, you can buy airtime and data via our app. Those behaviors um, and the migration of customer away from the, the, the banking landscape toward our telco need to have an incentive driver. And uh, there's a lot of studies to, to demonstrate this. Um, however, the behavior cannot just be that of, of, of incentivization. They would also need to have products that obviously um, they believe are valuable. And if you want to capitalize on, and currently we have teams driving different growth agendas. They're driving the downloads of the applications. We're driving push messaging to customers to purchase product via our mobile applications. And it's creating a lot of noise in the ecosystem. But what we really need is focus time to say, what is the blueprint? that is going to lock this customer into our ecosystem and drive that partner in life me mentality together with that of products that they cannot refuse. And the combination of that will really see us 10X uh, from a shareholder value creation perspective. And I do not see any other way particularly. I think telcos need to understand the commitment toward diversification in revenue, whether it's a B2B, uh, play or B2C play uh, that can come through financial services uh, to points mentioned by uh, our Accenture MD, uh, EduTech, um, Health Tech. How do we really surf our own wave in that regard? The products that are going to live on the connectivity landscape and the business cases of, the, of those environments, a simple use case. Uh, sensors that live within the aisles of retailers that help them manage traffic um, and inventory management and, and operationalize uh, and realize operational excellence through cost optimization from the data that will now come out of this. Who is going to own that? Are we going to own the connectivity that rides on the IoT that would be implemented? Or do we own that value chain? Is that industry lucrative enough for us to own the technology, the maintenance, the installation uh, of that end-to-end -end value chain. And those are the types of sizings we need to now go and do from a B2B perspective. And obviously for each country, it will vary um, in that regard. So with that being said, um, the idea of a value vacuum becomes very important for these organizations. We have successfully done it in South Africa from a financial services perspective where we've built a business that within four years has contributed exponentially to the overall core telco's bottom line yeah, from a financial services perspective. We've built insurance, uh, an insurance vertical, a uh, lending vertical, a payments vertical, um, which have given birth to other value vacuums within it. And the, the, the number of sales um, that we have generated through these products is, is exponential. And it wouldn't be possible without the vision from a senior leadership team uh, within our space to understand that there is a changing and evolving customer. There is the need for multidimensional differentiated 
product. And Telco uh, has the data to build these differentiated models, these personalized services. We're tracking enough touch points within our lives of the customer to, 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 to clinically be at a moment of truth. Um, and it's amazing the results that we've generated just from this one use case of financial services. And like I mentioned, the growth from here on end. And look, I know a lot of uh, speakers speak about innovation and transformation and diversification. I can tell you it's not going to come without um, hard work and support and a vision that needs to have hands on deck and investment in people qualified um, skill sets uh, who understand different industries. And that is what it's really going to take. If the size of the industry is big enough, this is what organizations are going to have to do. Um, they're going to have to build in verticals at executive levels to chair and drive the culture change from a diversification perspective. It's not just going to happen. It's not, it can't be a side conversation around, yeah, I think diversification needs to come from uh, alternative uh, industries within our, unfortunately not. It's going to take systems. It's going to take people, uh, processes, distribution. And yes, the, the existence of the telco can leverage efficiencies. Um, but more so than that, those verticals can now pour into your telco cup. Uh, your, your, your previous uh, devices, which you're now offering, now come with built-in CVPs, um, which now can speak to a branded economy. If you look at your high-end segment, the, the, their behavior can be translated into, I'll just use an example, coins, which they now can exchange um, in a, a, a super app of, of, of different products uh, that come from the other companies. So for example, at Vodacom, we've launched a super app. Those coins can be translated into other products that come from uh, the various other brands and products that we host within our super app. And all of a sudden you've got an ecosystem that you've developed that um, can build sustainable relationships with our consumers in the long term. Uh, and that's just at a strategic level. On the ground, we, 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 we sell a cell phone over a 24 month and 36 month period. What is that customer journey in that three years? How are we leveraging data science to provide triggers around when's the next best time for this customer to upgrade because we want to keep this customer uh, for as long as possible. So like I mentioned, there's, there's many use cases uh, around our existing business, around transformation and diversification that we can speak about. And um, it's really going to take a combination of efforts um, in that regard. And where do we start? So I think industries need to identify, well, telcos in the, in the various countries need to identify where are the biggest opportunities from a needs perspective. For example, if there's a growing um, SME, SME market within a specific country, uh, pro product diversification into that space is going to be critical. Um, if, they, if, for example, they are highly regulated uh, financial services um, products that are limiting uh, the distribution to consumer. How do telcos innovate around that, leveraging the technology that they have to really capitalize on that market? Um, so it's really a CVP design exercise that needs to be followed through on. And yeah, I think I've spoken quite a bit um, on, 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 on the layouts. So in simply, Simply put, the as is telco business, how are we differentiating ourselves in that customer lifecycle journey? So for example, a customer buys a cell phone from us, how are we managing his activity on our network? And how are we incentivizing? I'll tell you some of the use case problems. We identified within a certain segment of our customer base, there's a lot of multi-simming taking place based on the fact that they, a customer finds that they have cheaper data at one provider and cheaper voice at another. So they kind of multi-sim, which means that there's revenue leakage. We implemented um, a, a project that 
leverage financial services as an incentive for this customer to continue partnering with us. And we stretched these active days from 17 to almost the entire month. So this just gives you a view of the kind of as is business and how diversified C, uh, products which meets your customer segment needs are going to drive your revenue uh, business both at a telco level as well as standalone in, its, in, in isolation. And I think that um, I'd like to just end with, a, with, with something that will keep all of us honest in terms of ways that we want to go um, with our business. And it goes, uh, sorry, just a second, just pulling it up. Uh, it goes something like this. It's actually by Mr. Benjamin E. Mays. The tragedy of life is not found in failure, but complacency. Not in you doing too much, but doing too little. Not in you living above your means, but below your capacity. It's not failure, but aiming too low. That's life's greatest tragedy. And with that being said, um, sorry, I'm not sure how much more time I have left, but with that being said, I think it's very clear what we need to do at a very tangible level uh, from a business perspective to alleviate some of this pressure. Wow, Mr. Maharaj, that's uh, it's very quite inspiring. Um, beautiful um, quotes to end it by. And um, yeah, of course, we always have you know, a couple of questions. And um, yeah, one of which, I mean, um, you know, Vodacom is one of the leading um, you know, cellular networks in South Africa and of course across the globe of Africa. Um, how have you been responding to you know, consumer needs as, as it relates to price, particularly to young people, the youth? You know, they saying, um, and of course, I think this is a question that I've asked you prior to say, mm. how do you respond to this market of students or rather of, of young people who are saying, you know, data is costly. Um, and at the same time, also having to, of course, um, make your investors and your shareholders happy. How you balance those you know, two stakeholders? No, of course. And, and, and uh, I, I appreciate the, the focus on the youth because that, that is obviously our customer of the future as well. And um, if you want to be a partner in life to our consumers, it really starts um, at these various levels, uh, right from the education pillar up to uh, the various life stages of the customer. And uh, with that being said, most definitely, um, we have seen a lot of downward pressure on our pricing uh, from, a, from, a, from, a, from a mobile and fixed perspective. And... Firstly, within our organization, we have very segment-specific um, focus uh, because, look, the needs and wants of the various um, customers differ quite exponentially, as well as the way in which customers want to be engaged with and the, dyna the dyna dynamic way in which our technology is designed is critical. Um, for example, um, as a youth customer, um, who's in varsity, you do not want to be opening your app to um, a, an insurance product that speaks about debt, as an example. So how we've tackled this problem is by having diversified our business and offerings, we've now been able to enrich our core telco offerings. And by that, we've kind of, I'll just use a use case of how we've created um, a take me home services for our youth customers who, um, you know, who demonstrated loyalty within 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 our markets, uh, and how that's kind of made them agnostic to the price changes uh, that we may not have employed, based on in relation to the pressure that was put on. The value they are seeing from a from a output perspective uh, or their relationship with us as a telco has become enriched. So where we could not provide relief from a pricing perspective, we've created value from an offering perspective. And we've seen that largely um, from our retention and customer servicing measures uh, in that environment where um, if within our markets, and obviously we've done studies on this, if customers can find value in what they're paying for, um, they will be priced inelastic. And it does come to your point with building those other verticals and in order to alleviate that pressure because uh, there are only so so many margins that 
uh, and levers we can pull. Uh, for example, when you're purchasing a device from, from our business, it's coming built in with the SIS products that are uh, positioning themselves to be at your time of need. Youngsters are losing their keys, needing uh, locksmiths, um, you know, be able to provide those services uh, embedded. Uh, and all of a sudden, you know, you're now feeling safer uh, within your ecosystem. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. And uh, I mean, let, let's talk about, you know, the infrastructure that's required. Um, and, uh, particularly in these rural areas where we want to increase accessibility, how much capital requirements are required just to establish, you know, uh, you know, connection in, in an area that's, that's, that, that has no coverage? Mm -hmm. No, for sure. I think, I think one of the challenges you have in our developing markets is the range uh, in which the customers exist. Um, you have, obviously, um, you can have your, 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 your poverty uh, stricken environments and your high net worth segments living kilometers away from each other. Um, and with that being said, uh, the problem statements become a, a variety depending on where, where you focus. And from a connectivity perspective, um, fortunately within, um, within South Africa, there's been quite a lot of investment uh, from a technology perspective, which has alleviated a lot of the connectivity issues. What we, where we're really focusing now is to drive accessibility to, to 4G enabled technology, which will then obviously drive access. But um, I think each and every country will have a different maturity in that regard. And to, to the previous speaker's points, I think governments require influence and the, the what's in it for them conversation is always, um, a tough one and where we need to go as experts is what does that turnkey ecosystem look like to incentivize the economy to drive the connectivity narrative and that speaks to eliminating your macroeconomic issues such as access employment and and those are the narratives we need to speak to when we are trying to you know influence those conversations yeah, yeah. just last one before i let you meet mr maharaj um I always slip my mind. The impact of lockdown, and not not lockdown. My apologies. Um, of load shedding, rather. Um, mm -hmm. What what has been the impact there with uh, on the telecommunication industry? No, most no. Thanks for that. Um, obviously, uh, the natural infrastructure is built on on, on an energy landscape, and uh, not only have we. Not only within South Africa yeah, and, and other markets, but I'll speak specifically in South Africa, we do we deal in. with um, a lot of um, macroeconomic issues um, around crime, etc. But to your point, the energy uh, grid uh, has has a lot of instability issues, and our organisation particularly has seen um, a lot of impact from that regard. In that. Uh, your, your towers, uh, your uptime is reduced drastically. Uh, the time between um, the load shedding is so aggressive that your generators do not have enough time to charge to support the distribution. It's falling networks. It's, it's issues around uh, subsequently uh, downtime, which obviously has a ripple effect across that onion that I spoke about. Uh, I mean, it can go up to affecting employment, shutting down businesses. Um, and, and you see that the number of SMEs that have closed uh, year on year within South Africa has increased by 48% uh, purely because of a calamity of issues. The, the, the truth is that um, this energy crisis creates a cause and effect narrative for something that ordinarily didn't exist. Um, before, it would be impossible for me to tell you one specific reason why there's a downtrend in the, the, the shutting down of businesses because it could be in, it, numerous factors. However, I can point you to the fact that the energy crisis has been one of the core issues of recent. And as experts within telecoms and, and technology to the point that has been made by various uh, speakers and us moving into a technology play, we need to find how we uh, encapsulates 
expertise within that field? How do we partner with independent experts? How do we provide a trust between independent experts and our government? And the trust being our due diligence uh, expertise that we are able to deliver from a technology perspective to kind of bring relief to that problem. And I think telecoms industries particularly need to, need to source um, independent uh, energy sources. And that's happening quite aggressively. If you look at just my organization and the strong leadership that we have uh, in, in, in the likes of uh, Shamil Jusab, who's our CEO, he's driving a strong narrative now around really closing that gap between um, our current energy crisis and the impact that it's having nationally through stepping in as a, as, as a caveat between independent energy sources, which, are, which do exist, and alleviating the stress on our current grid. Uh, Mr. Maharaj, thank you very much. Um, to our audience at large, just to remind you, Mr. Maharaj is the portfolio manager. I think he at Vodacom, um, specifically dealing with product and distribution. Thank you very much for your insight. And um, yeah, we wish you well. And uh, yeah, all the best uh, with, with, with Vodacom.